Hello, everybody. Welcome to the podcast. It's me, Cash, and our special guest today is Parallax Party, Matt, one of my best friends. We were having a lovely conversation uh, earlier. How are you doing? Can we hear you, Matt? Hello. There you go. Awesome. Hi. <laughs> we're here. We're ready. And our topic today is going to be mental health awareness. Um, and I just froze your camera. That's we're going to have some I... issues, but we're working through it. <laughs> yeah. We're good. All right. Let's get started. Um, I mean, there's no easy way to start this, but we're going to be talking about our own, our own, um, dealings with mental illness today and maybe some advice for, for people who deal with it and people who, um, know friends or family that are dealing with it. Yeah. So like, uh. I don't know if I've made this evident uh, recently, but like back when I first started like doing things as a content creator, the entire purpose was because I wanted to raise more mental health awareness and like create some type of community where I, I, I could be there for people who were going through similar issues as me. Um, for those of you who don't know, I, I suffer from very severe clinical depression and uh, PTSD. Um, I have for pretty much my entire life. Um, so I, it's a matter of like, I, I've gone so far in dealing with it since like I first uh, like got diagnosed and I, w I want everyone to know that like no matter how many issues that like, you deal with in your daily day like the there's so many ways out that you can like get better and like still live your life to the fullest of your capabilities yeah. and for me personally um, I've been I've been diagnosed a couple of times um, so I kind of treat it as a label, I guess, to myself, but I deal with um, major depressive disorder and generalized anxiety. Um, I can't speak uh, on behalf of PTSD, uh, schizophrenia, any other types of mental disorder, but I guess for now we'll, we'll definitely cover, I guess, what we know more than yeah. anything. Um, so yeah, I guess... Uh, Let's talk about, you know, when did it, when did it start? Like, when did um, you realize or become for aware? For me, yeah. I remember, for me, um, when I was a kid, that's when I first realized, like, that, well, I didn't realize I had depression at that point, because at that point, I would just thought I was different from, uh, like, everyone else, because everyone else would be going around their life pretty carefree, and it seemed to me like they had, they, they had more things figured out than I did. At that time, I wasn't picking up on social cues. I tended to isolate myself, even as a, like a little kid from the age of like twelve and up. And I started like growing further and further apart from everyone else in my peers, and feeling like there was something wrong inside me. Um, especially when it came to my emotions, a lot of my depression and PTSD manifested itself in the way I processed my emotions, and more so to the fact that I didn't. Um, I grew very apathetic and not true apathy because even though i felt apathy i at that still time i felt like i i felt bad about myself for not feeling anything um that was how my depression first manifested and like my ptsd for the longest time i didn't even know that i had ptsd and when i found out that i did i was like what that doesn't make any sense why would i have that um because we have a, a, i think most people have a tendency to write off their own trauma um to make it seem less important yeah. than like anyone else and uh it's it's so it takes a long time to just for me especially like it took me a long time to just even realize where my own trauma was coming from and uh you can't deal with trauma before you like even if you don't recognize it exists absolutely i completely agree with that and it was really it's hard for me to i was talking with matt about this early it's hard for me to pinpoint a certain time or age when when i really kind of realized what was going on i think i also was a socially isolated kid um on the you you talked about like not feeling enough and and kind of dealing with this mental illness because of that or in a situation of that for me it's i'm a very sensitive person so everything definitely hit me personally um everything i was going through with in school and family um and there's so much to go over with like maybe why but i'm not going to talk about that um mm -hmm. i think i think that just going through life it, it's it's 
it's hard to become aware of what's going on. And when I was dealing with these feelings, I definitely felt alone. It's very easy to feel alone and like you don't have, or you're very different from everybody else because you see, and I think social media is a big, big part of this. You see a lot yeah. of people just posting stuff and it looks like everybody's having fun, just enjoying life. And I, you, you get that thought of, you know, why, why am I not feeling that way? Or why am I not doing these things? Yeah. Like what's wrong with me? Why can I experience these things that like, it seems like everyone else can do so easily. But for like, for me, it felt like I had this huge weight on my shoulders. Like I couldn't move around as freely as anyone else. And uh, I wasn't able to experience all the joys of childhood or happy thoughts like that. Like it, it would just seemed alien to me. And like, I know for you, you said in your last podcast how you felt like yeah, you you desperately kind of wanted to fit in, and like you had all these extracurricular activities. Um, for me, it was probably um, pretty much the opposite. Like I, it, I had the same feelings, but for me, I, I became more self punishing and I isolated myself even more. Like I didn't have any extracurriculars throughout uh, school because I just didn't feel like I belonged anywhere. Um, so I separated myself entirely from the idea of normal or people like that. I started treating myself as like less than a human. Um, like my self views and like my my whole like even now like I have this giant ego, but the way it started was more of a defense mechanism because of how insecure I was with myself and the fact that I just didn't even view myself as someone who was worthy of having these feelings that everyone else seemed to have so easily. I feel like I was similar in a case, but it was, it was more a loop and that's why I pushed myself. I, I feel like I was, without realizing it, combating my depression um, in the school years because I went through a loop of pushing myself to, you know, put put myself out there and, and do what everybody else was doing and like, you know, fit in, like you said. But there was also times when I would shut myself down and say, you know, like, stop talking, just just listen to people or don't you know, don't, don't put yourself out there. It's a, it's a whole yeah. back and forth between those two things because you get really defeated when, when something, you know, bad happens out of pushing yourself. Like, I don't know, there's bullying, there's all that stuff. Like, it's just, it's a back and Absolutely. forth with trying to fit in and then not wanting to fit in. Yeah. Like even when, uh, when I was going through high school and I had some friends, like I had, even I, I had this friend group, but I didn't consider them close friends. And I always would, uh, I would feel bad about myself because like I would just drop off the face of the earth pretty much for a couple of days. Like I'd just be absent from school, just not show up, don't wouldn't go anywhere. And like it, I kept on getting like I, I was so defeatist about myself when I got back because like it just seemed like uh, all my friends went on without me and like no one even really cared that I wasn't there or that like I wasn't feeling like myself. It didn't seem like they could tell. Uh, I felt like even though I consider them friends, like they probably didn't even see me as much of anything, which I'm sure wasn't true. But from my perception, that's how I perceived it. And that actually like probably separated me more from them because I started just isolating myself, feeling like, well, if I can't have, like if I don't have any friends or anyone, what's the point? Like, why, why should I, why you even bother? And it's so like, like I, it's like depression and anxiety both play a very close role together. And um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if people think about it like this um, or realize it, but these mental illnesses are very much comorbid. And the fact that what that means is, is when you have a mental illness such as depression, you're very likely to also have some sort of other mental illness like anxiety. Yeah. They very much go together. Um, it's, it's hard to see depression without anxiety honestly or or any other mental illness it, it happens all the time yeah exactly like my ptsd which um by the way i did eventually figure out what it was from it was from uh, i didn't ever get to over the death of my grandmother um that's pretty much what triggered my depression for me because like uh, i was a very um empathic kid like i felt like i wanted to help everyone and then watching someone close to me die over a couple like it took like two years really like messed me up emotionally and i wasn't able to like really ever recover from that um but like my ptsd while it does exist as like a separate entity in my head definitely it cohabitates with my depression because uh while like a ptsd attack is completely different from a depressive attack um i am definitely more uh, likely to have a ptsd attack if i'm dwelling in a, a depressive state or like uh like if my thoughts in my head aren't aren't good because like depression, it 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 doesn't 
it leans towards bad thoughts in general. Yeah, absolutely. And it's hard to get away from that. And it's a, it's a constant struggle. There's, and we'll, we'll delve into this with the next topic, but it's like, it's a constant struggle through life dealing with this stuff. It's not necessarily a cure. There's no cure for it. It's not yeah, gone. Absolutely. Um, so now I want to, I want to go into some, some myths about mental health and just have our, our views on it. Yeah. So like, absolutely. I would say the biggest myth it, for, especially for people who deal with depression is that there's some easy way out of it. And that like, uh, you'll, you can go and you can just get the medication and like, that'll be it. And they'll be gone. Cause that is very destructive, especially for someone who's trying to get better. Cause it's not ever going to be easy just to, to get better, especially when you're first starting out. It gets easier as you work harder and harder on it, but it doesn't ever really stop becoming work. And I mean, it's worth it though. That's the that's the bottom line. Is like I've so I'm so fulfilled today because I put in all the hard work to get to where I am. Um, you can't rely on some like uh, magical cure all or anything like that. You have to put in the work. There's no way around it. And another myth I would say is like people think that like um the, the other people can help you out of your depression and they can help but at the end of the day all the work really falls upon you there's no way to get someone else out of depression you can't like you can't make someone feel better from something like this because it doesn't work that way it's absolutely. very internalized and personal absolutely and i feel like th there's a lot of people who don't really understand what what it's like to go through these things and if you don't know how to help somebody, it's oftentimes you can kind of make it worse um, in yeah. some situations. And I'll talk about my family. <laughs> so my mom, <laughs> my mom really does not understand uh, what I'm going through to my knowledge. Uh, she always asks a lot of questions to try, try and understand, but it's, she's very, hard. yeah, there's times when it's like, I know she cares, but there's times when she will check on me and make sure I'm okay. Like, almost all the time and it's like okay mm -hmm. it gets to a point where i get really irritated with my like because of my depression i become irritated and defensive um against these people who are constantly trying to push their way in to make sure that i'm okay and i yeah. feel like my dad does a little bit better of a job not i don't know in a different way like he won't he won't bother me about it but when there is something wrong and i have the courage to go and speak up about something he will listen and that's basically that's a good way to go about it. I feel like there's some common middle ground, you know, checking on somebody without bringing up mental health, I guess, or just kind of checking on yeah. them as a person. Like, how are you doing today? And, you know, because no one with depression wants to be treated like, you know, like a leper or like someone who has a disease. Cause that's not, it's not a good way of feeling really. Exactly. <laughs> like, uh, if you, if you're going to like check on someone, like just check on them because you care about them and you want them to feel better. You don't have to like, be like i have to check on them because they have this illness because that that's not how the illness is because the illness when it, it's a depression it's not like a cold or something it's something where it can be in a lot of times innately tied to the person's personality and the way that they live their life um and it, it's something where you can't just you can't just like treat them as if they're different because of it because they're always going to be the way they are so you it's so there there are going to be times when they're down because of it or not but like uh you don't check on them at like like as if they're like it's going to suddenly flare, flare up because that's going to make them flare up <laughs> oh absolutely and i think if you think think of this from the perspective of the person dealing with mental health they absolutely will have these thoughts that you're only checking up on them because you feel like you have to all the time i feel yeah. like the fact that people do this to me and they come and just automatically assume I'm dealing with something or, or whatnot at the moment, it makes me feel like I'm a burden because exactly. Yeah. yeah because I'm, I'm taking their time away to come and check on me when I, I might be fine, you know? And it just, I feels like, yeah, all I'm doing is, is creating problems for other people and it kind of makes That's it worse. The number one fear for me, like I hate feeling I'd, I'd be a burden to someone like, I remember like going through all my past relationships. Like I always try like anytime something goes wrong, I always write it down to like, Oh, it's just me because I'm a burden because of everything I'm dealing with. And I, I, I maybe I relied on them too much or something like that. Um, 
and that's it's a destructive viewpoint to have you don't ever want to like you shouldn't ever feel like you're a burden to someone because at the end of the day you're you you know and people who are close to you are going to want to be close to you that's 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 just how normal relationships work and it's very destructive to think like that because you have something wrong with you like even if you do have something wrong with you because i mean that's at the end of the day what it is like it when it's depression it's something where it's something that you deal with your entire life so at the end of the day it's part of you and people yeah mm. it's very difficult to be happy when like you're dealing with this, these issues because you can't you feel like you can't get close to people because you feel like you're a burden and it's very hard to approach it from the outsider point of view because you do want to check up on them and that's healthy and natural and you have to find a middle ground where you can feel comfortable with someone and that's very hard to reach that homeostasis feeling like a burden i feel is the the majority of the issue um of getting help because yeah, when absolutely. you feel like you're a burden to people, you're not going to reach out to them. You're not going to feel comfortable with telling them what's going on or even talking about your problems. And I feel like that's that's the biggest thing to overcome. And that's why what you were saying about the myth of can people help you with your mental illness? Like, yes, but it starts, it stems from you and yeah. learning that well there's it's both sides it's learning that you're not necessarily a burden to people and it's okay to talk about these things with people but also on the on the side of helping somebody who's dealing with these things you have to the best thing you can do is to create a safe space for people uh, dealing with these things you have to make sure that they somehow understand that you they can come to you with anything and you will be there to listen that is the best thing you can do and that's not necessarily going up and talking to them and be like, hey, you can trust me. Tell me all everything like that. That yeah. does not work. Uh, <laughs> but it make me like shut down entirely. But mm. <laughs> I think one big thing that people have a problem with outside of mental illness and just in general is is listening. And the best tip I can give you when when trying to help somebody is to actually like listen to what they're saying and to have them know that you're listening, listen to what they're saying and try to repeat it back to them, you know? So it's like, yeah. I see you're having these problems from, from this. I assume that you're feeling this way or whatnot from what you're going through. And that, that will definitely help them feel more comfortable because they know that I, you're actually listening to them. I think the number one thing that helps for me, especially is just having someone listen. I don't want someone to try and solve my problems because a lot of times, you know, depression is very irrational, so there aren't usually rational ways to feel better. Um, but having someone listen to me and like actually be supportive like that, and just letting it like get all out like from me, that that's very helpful. Um, I would say, as a warning, because uh, first from my own past experiences, uh, for people who are dealing with depression, don't saddle just one person with all of everything you're going through. Because I feel like that's definitely a tendency. Like people like who go through depression, they have a hard time trusting others. So they'll choose one person who they trust and they'll just saddle all of them with all of their emotions and all their thoughts. And that is very destructive towards that relationship because you, when you have that much going on that you can't handle it yourself, there's no way someone else is going to be able to handle everything. All right. The, the healthy way to do it is you have to give little bits and pieces have like a support group like a, like an actual support system in place um and it took me forever to figure that out because like i would do that thing where i just saddled one person with it because I, I just didn't want to talk to anyone else i didn't like uh repeating myself or like uh getting it all out there all the time but like it didn't actually help me all it did was ruin any relationship that i had with any of those people because like they felt so overwhelmed by all the things i was dealing with and it, it just it didn't like there was no support there it was just in balance um now i've got like i've i'm tried to be more open so i talk like whenever i have something on my mind uh whoever i'm with who i feel close to i can talk to them about it and just little bits and pieces here here and there 
And that type of support is so much more inducive of a healthy relationship. And it makes me feel better. I feel like I can, I can like count on my friends and I don't have to like overwhelm them with this because it's just a little bit here and there. And I've got different people who at different times will help me. Um, I think that's the healthiest way of getting support is just not like overwhelming people with it, but like having little pieces here and there. I think that's that's a big problem with a lot of people dealing with it is putting pressure on their close friends or relatives because they're only talking to that one person. And that's a very good point that you brought up. And that's why it's so important when you have to put it on somebody, put it on a professional. Go 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 yes. to therapy. Go talk to a therapist. There's so much stigma around that. And I'm going to I'm going to shift away from the myth myths topic because I feel like we're going in a different direction and we need to go here. It's like therapy is okay there's so much stigma around not going and i have the problem myself like i will think in my head yes it's time to go to therapy it's time to go talk to a therapist but i will never make the call i will never set up an appointment mm -hmm. unless i'm forced to and then as soon as i go in there i feel so much better because i'm able to talk to somebody about everything and i don't have to worry about straining a relationship or you know ruining a friendship with somebody because i'm putting all my problems on them these people are trained and that's their career is to help you and listen to everything and they actually might have good solutions to help uh, combat this problem absolutely they're they're unbiased they're someone who's outside of your life so they don't have those personal attachments that can get in the way of like giving sound advice um uh, I th the thing about the stigma about the therapy is is just so weird because what do you have to lose from therapy? Therapy is good for healthy people who don't deal with depression. Like everyone has things in their life that they can't talk about with that with like normal people without like causing strain or stress. And therapy is such a good way of getting th your thoughts sorted out, getting your life sorted out. It's it's just so strange. Like even with me, because I, like you said, I have the same issue. Where I'm like, I, I avoid therapy because I'm like, I'll be like, I don't have the time or like, I just don't want to talk about it again. And it's like, you just write off all these excuses. And it really does help because I've done therapy before. And it just, like I said, by having someone listen and being able to just get it all out, like that venting is so therapeutic. I mean, <laughs> to say, to use the word properly, it's, it's just a lot of times that helps in itself. And then having someone there who can give you good advice and unbiased advice and actually is there just to listen you don't have to worry about training them because they hear it all uh it's so it's such weird that, that there's such a stigmata about it i think it's, it's it's definitely from earlier times the stigma is formed where you, you're seen as weak with all these mental illnesses and so going to a therapist means you're weak <laughs> basically i think that's what why that's there or why that was made in the first place and i think it's it's a good path that we need to move forward from that and realize that like there's myths and we'll go back to this. There's myths about, you know, people with depression or fighting mental illness are not good workers. They don't, they don't, yeah, they're not productive. They're so lazy. And that's absolutely not true. Matt here no. goes to work every fucking single day. He has to, <laughs> and it's like, you know, I have my issues with it. I don't think it's from depression that I'm having issues with work. I think it's, it's the jobs in general, but I, people dealing with these issues can be productive. They are productive. They, it's, it's part of them. It's not like we're, we're just lying in bed all day. And sometimes that does happen. I'm not going to lie, yeah. but I think that myth is totally wrong. To be fair though, there are definitely issues like with depression that get in the way of working or being part of like a normal society. Absolutely. Cause I remember like when I first started my job, I was absent all the time because like I just would wake up one day and be like I can't I just don't I have don't have the energy like I can't do this today I'd call out and like that just kept on racking up and I kept up and being like oh well they're not gonna fire me because like I I can at least call out three times a month so like I'll just use today and I'll be <laughs> fine and like I would continually do that for like a good long time before I finally realized hey this is definitely impacting my job performance I'm not going anywhere with this I'm not getting the money I need it's not making me feel better. So why am I doing it? And that's when I like, a, like I started pushing myself. I'm like, all right, even if I don't feel good, I'll feel better once I get there. And like, I almost always do, especially if you have a mindset. That's how I push through 
and got to the point where I am now where like I'm a supervisor and I'm able to manage working and I'm, and it's actually healthier for me to be there because when I'm doing something as long as I'm not overly stressed like just I feel normal because I'm doing normal things and uh, I think that's a lot healthier than just sitting at home and like giving in and feeling like you can't do anything keeping busy is so important because it keeps your mind at bay from all the crazy extraneous negative thoughts that come out so i think that's yeah. a really good point to make and i guess i'm not saying the myth is completely completely bogus i mean yeah i have my issues i go to uh whenever i you know had a job it's it's going to work the first month felt fantastic i was ready to get out there and do some work and then you know just just having my coworkers say negative things about the job or whatever brought yeah. me down and then i started thinking those negative things and then you know there were days or you know weeks when i felt like absolute garbage and i had to call in and there's a stigma around that too where it's like i'm i'm calling in and i'm super scared to call every time because i have to say i feel sick or something like that you know yeah, i can't like say Dude, i feel like dying i have <laughs> i really don't have motivation to go to work today i can't say that because that sounds so dumb and i know that n most people will not understand why i don't know that's a that's a big problem too but I, I i understand that you have to go to work like that is your job and you have to do that for the company and to make money it's just mm -hmm. that's a big that's it's a big i think the myth issue but really depress like people with depression can be productive absolutely it there's challenges to it but like you can absolutely be productive and it is also definitely important that you don't overwork yourself because when you're dealing with depression you do need some time that you can just decompress and like allow yourself that time to like feel better you just can't overindulge because mm -hmm. that, that's when it becomes destructive because I've, I've been on both sides of the spectrum, like where I would overwork myself and I'd stay up all night, every night, because I was like, I was just pushing off sleeping because like I had horrible night terrors. And I was like, well, then I'll just, I'll work. I'll work through it all. And that's when I like learned how to play 14 different instruments and just kept on like burning the midnight oil. And like, that was even more so destructive to my psyche because I didn't give myself any time to rest or actually process any of the emotions or feelings that I was dealing with. You have to process things or you're never going to get any better. You can't just ignore everything. So you have to give in at some point and be like, all right, I'm going to sit down. Um, I, I, I push off my work for today. Like, I'm not feeling up to it. Like, let's see why I'm not feeling up to it. And then we'll, we'll work past it. That working past it part, that's the important part, though. Absolutely. I completely agree. I think um, that... God, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> when I'm talking um, about this issue, it's like... I don't know you there's a way to get about it it's like you you learn i think the awareness is the biggest the biggest key to combating this like yes. you don't know right off the bat that you're dealing with these problems you just assume that you're different from everybody and that absolutely that's that but then when you actually go and get help or you you learn that you're dealing with this stuff that is the first step because then you become more aware about what's going on with you and that it's not necessarily that you're different or you, you know, you have yeah. issues. It's, there's a lot of people that are dealing with this and, and that might help as well. But being aware is the single most th like best thing that I've ever done for myself because I'm able to, I'm able to do things like you said, like, um, think about it at the end of the day or like when i'm having issues and, and saying why why am i feeling this way asking why and trying to figure these things out has really helped me um because then then you can once you figure out why this is happening or in a certain day or just in general you can start to ask how can i cope with this like like how can i better combat this during the day to 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 make myself more productive or feel better or do the things i want to do rather than laying in bed yeah like uh for me i remember like uh before when i didn't realize i had depression or anything and i just felt different and like i wasn't human or anything when i started getting help learning about it and what it actually was and being able to visualize it in my head was so helpful like realizing that depression it's a disease and it actually it's a physical thing in your brain like it's a for me it's a chemical imbalance so like being able to like pinpoint down what it is was it so like helpful for getting past it because i could be like all right these thoughts 
that I'm having right now, they're irrational thoughts and they're coming from a chemical imbalance in my head. So it's not something that like, it's not like a little voice that's speaking some unknown truth to me. It's just a disease in my head. And the disease is something like that. If I could separate it from myself, I could be like, all right, this is the disease talking, not me. So I don't have to take this to heart. I don't have to feel bad about myself about this because it's not me speaking. It's just this, this disease. And that was helpful for moving past it and being able to fight it. Cause it's very, it's impossible to fight yourself. You can't fight your own thoughts, but if you're able to separate it in your head and fight this disease, then it's much easier to move past it and be able to like get on with your life and get on with your day and not take any of that to heart and feel better about yourself. Because a lot of times those bad thoughts you have about yourself, they're not true. And there's actual proof out there that will show you that like that's not how the world is. That's not how your life is. Like there are always people who care about you. There's always people in your life that are there for you. Uh, it's just a matter of not convincing yourself otherwise. You can't give in to that voice in your head, the disease. Uh, you have to be able to separate it. I feel as a the sensitive person that I am, it's it the big change of awareness kind of changed me from a emotional being into more of a logical being, which sounds kind of silly, but it's like like you, what you're talking about. You you start to actually. I don't know. You deal with the problem by thinking about it or like yeah. finding solutions rather than feeling. I don't know. And then that's that's changed me completely as a human being. I think more logically about everything now. It's it's and it's not like I'm trying to push my away, emotions away. It's it's trying to understand what what's going on there. And I think yeah, one energy. one big thing that has um I wonder if it's going through everybody dealing with these kind of things. It's very interesting. But for me one way to kind of it was it's not a, a way to to deal or cope with depression i guess it's more of a uh, deflection <laughs> of my feelings is through humor and that's how i have kind of dealt with it most of my um teenage life is just using a lot of humor to <laughs> overcome and where i see this a lot is through social media and tweet posts or anything you see a lot of people joking about uh, suicide and things like that um and you see one half of people commenting on that sort of stuff like why would you joke about this this is not a funny subject but on the other side it's like maybe they're not joking it, it comes off as a joke but i feel like most people that make those kind of statements or posts online are it's a cry for help i think because that's what humor is in this scenario and it takes these these concepts and ideas that like we deal with and we feel like we have to internalize and makes it something that we can approach. And it, it's uh, something that it's when we can get it out like that, even if we're not like saying, hey, I'm suicidal, it's it's the way of, of getting it out there and being like, this is was what's happening. And like you can you can deal with it yourself through humor. Like it's a way of actually not internalizing it. Completely. I think um, as far as humor as far as humor goes, I, it's definitely a warning signal that somebody is going through something. I, I I've made my fair share of <laughs> posts when I was younger. I definitely don't touch Twitter that much anymore for that reason. <laughs> I don't want to. Yeah. Because it, it goes back to burden. It goes back to feeling like a burden. You feel like a burden, so you don't want to. You don't want to post or even talk to people. Like you don't want to post things like. I'm feeling down, help me or something. It's like, cause then you start feeling like, oh, now I'm just trying to get attention from people and I don't exactly. want to do that. So I now I'm just gonna, yeah, now I'm just gonna be an edgy teen and, and tweet about how I want to die. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the problem there. Yeah, see, I see there's two sides of it because I did the same exact thing, like going through high school and middle school and all that. Um, and now I, I still use that humor mostly because it's more communal to me. Because it's like a, it's like a thing. Like, all right, these are people who get it, and they're like, well, it's just become so adapted to my lexicon of humor, um, and like, it's it's just a way where it can be a coping skill and it can be healthy. It's just a matter of whether or not you're actually dealing with the things that you're joking about or not. I might disagree with that as far as it being healthy. I think I think you might have it into your language, and so do I, because it's become so popularized lately. Like that is the big thing you see everybody 
making these kind of like comments or posts i think it's just because it's become so like in the trend which is weird that to talk about it in that way i don't think it's necessarily healthy because i think that can bring about negative thoughts and emotions when you're posting those sort of things maybe there's a good way to go about it but i don't know if i've found it yet <laughs> you're right um see that's what i'm saying like because I felt both ways before, like where I, I'm, I'm part of all these meme groups where it's like all the, the jokes about depression and everything. And there are times when like it overwhelms me and like I, I get upset about it and other stuff. But there are other times when I see it and I just, I like, I can laugh about it. And that laughing about the my, what ails me makes me feel better about it. And especially seeing it as like all that stuff is more so in my not specifically my rear view, but like it's something where I can manage it now today. Because I can manage it now today, that type of humor relates to me more, but also less. So it's, it's it definitely is a thing where like it can be destructive, but it can also not be. It's just a matter of where you are at when you are exposed to it. I think I'm understanding it now. Now that I'm talking and listening to what you're saying, I think it is, it can be helpful in the way that, in a weird way, in that it's so popularized and you feel you can relate to these memes or whatever's going on you're relating to it and it feels like you're not alone i think that's the biggest thing about that is because yes you have a community of people who feel the same way because back when i was a kid and uh, like i was going through depression there weren't that t that type of community that d didn't exist and uh, or if it did it was at a place where i was not visiting probably like 4chan or something no one wants to go to 4chan um <laughs> so like i was just very I, I felt so isolated and alone and it never once like reached my head that there were other people out there who were going through the same exact thing as me. Like even if they weren't dealing with the same problems, they felt very similarly and they were going through similar things. Um, I remember um, when I was doing music covers on YouTube, uh, I was contacted by this girl um, who I w was, we just started talking because like she, and we found, I found out she had depression and was going through a lot of the same stuff I was collaborated on a couple tracks and we just like had a like a, like um we, we were like pen pals we sent emails back and forth and it, like finding out there was other people that were going through like pretty much the same thing as me and that we could relate like that i, I that was such a, a weight off my shoulder because for a long time i had convinced myself that i was the only one who felt these things and that it wasn't normal and it's not that's not normal because when you have depression, it is normal. And you have to realize that there are other people who are going through exactly the same thing as you. Like, circumstances might change, but depression, it's something where you, you have to be able to relate to other people about it. Because you're not different from everyone. Like, you are, but you aren't. Like, you're not ever alone. I think you're not different from everyone at all. You just have more obstacles to face in life that, that you have to push through in order to do what other yes. people can do that's i remember the thing. there was this uh group uh therapy i was part of and everyone was still was saying how they felt like they didn't have a choice to end up where they went and that like um that mental illness had led them to this path where they could they felt like they couldn't get out of it and i think that that's a very destructive way of thinking about it um i think you have just as many options as anyone else out there like you can you can like give in and follow your circumstances and like end up wherever you may but like if you work towards it and you fight for it then you can change your circumstances and you can end up wherever you want like anything you visualize you can achieve you just it just might take more work than the, someone who's not dealing with these thoughts i'm gonna go back to this again i feel like i need to keep going back to this go go to therapy at any age that you're at right now and it's definitely best to start while you're young but even wherever you are now if you need help go talk to a therapist because that will absolutely help you it, it's it's a temporary relief from talking to them and just being able to open up but if you keep going and do that it, it'll definitely help make life a lot easier for you but on, mm -hmm. on the topic of therapy, I want to talk about uh, what, you, what our stances are on medication. Yes. All right. <laughs> so I've touched this before in like a previous just talking about it. But my first experience with med medication was not a great one because um, I didn't go to a psychiatrist. 
first of all, anytime you're going through uh, anything like this, you, if you if you're going to get for help, you need to go for get get help from the right sources. You have to go see a psychiatrist if you want medication. I went went to my general practitioner instead of a psychiatrist, and the general practitioner is great. They are gen they do they're a family doctor like they deal with like a they have their hand in pretty much every pot, but they're not specialized in psychiatric medicine. So she probably did what she thought like was necessary in prescribing me this medication, but it was the exact wrong medication to put me on, and it was in a non unmonitored area because like she wasn't check I wasn't checking in on her because she was just a, a general practitioner. She didn't talk to me afterwards or have the meetings that I later would have with a psychiatrist. And um, for me, like my issue was that I was very apathetic and I was having issues processing emotions. So when I started taking this medication. I started feeling emotions again, but I started feeling every single feeling that I had like repressed all at once at 10 times intensity. And it drove me literally crazy. Like I, I, <laughs> I have no memories from that like two weeks. Cause like there's so much noise inside my head. I gotta say I've done, I did the same thing. I went to my family <laughs> practitioner for the first time um, when I was dealing with these issues. That's not a good place to go. I'm, I'm not, I'm not bashing on them, but like <laughs> you said, they have to deal with everything as far as doctors go. And they're not specialized in this sort of medication. So they're, they're pretty much like you talk to them about your problems and they're like, okay, well, I've heard that this works, so let's try this. And that's basically all they do. They don't have knowledge. There's so many different types of like antidepressants and medication that it, none, not one single thing works for everybody. And so it's, I had that issue too, where I went through medication. It basically made me feel some sort of shitty way, a lot of emotions, and I stopped. And unfortunately mm -hmm. with every medication that I've tried. I've tried it a few times, um, kind of off and on every now and then. I have like a weird cycle of just kind of battling it. And then it gets to say springtime and I feel so bad. Like I, I wait to the last second of how bad I'm feeling in order to go seek help. Like when it when it comes to, as soon as I start thinking the, the worst thoughts in my head, that's the best time to go. <laughs> Cause I'm really, I feel like I can beat this on my own but when i go and, and get help and then i i try medication i try it for like a month or two and then i hate it absolutely and i just stop and it's it's it hasn't been a good experience for me yeah so when i went on this run medication i it i had a breakdown like because i was unable to deal with my emotions everything was so intense i didn't know why i was feeling this way i had, I had no idea what was going on um so I decided that since I was going to get help, that I needed to do everything I could. Because I remember that I remember a very exact moment where I was like, "All right, so I can either kill myself, or I can get better. And if I'm going to get better, then I have to do everything in my power to get better, or there's no point, and I might as well just die." So that decision for me, when I was making it, of course, I thought about my little sisters, and that was the driving point for me that made me think, "Well, I can't." I can't kill myself because I, I, I know what it's like to lose someone and I, I can't do that to them. So I'm like, well, then I, I got to get it better. So I signed myself into a mental hospital for a unspecified amount of time because I wanted to give myself a controlled environment where I could try different medications and like actually just be able to not worry about how the, they might affect me. Cause like when I was on this medication, I went off the walls. So I, I can absolutely understand someone having that experience and just completely writing off medication for the rest of their life because of how bad I reacted to that. But I, I refused to give up hope that there, like, there was some way of getting better. And I was still under the impression that but, like, medication would make me feel like almost entirely better. Um, so I went through a couple different medications. I finally found one that sort of worked. And then I, like, I found another one that worked even better. The issue with medication is while it helps, it's not for depression at least. And this is di completely different with other mental illnesses. But for depression, for me, it's something where it's more of a crutch. Like it's something where it helps me get better, but I still have to put the work in. I still have to do the therapy. I still have to talk about it and deal with the issues. It just makes it so that it, it feel, I feel lighter while I'm doing it. Um, and like I took, like I was, uh, the Zoloft was what worked for me. I finally, I went through like five different medications before I got there. 
and uh, it made me feel a lot better for, while I was working on it. And I actually got to the point where I no longer feel like I need it because I'm able to like vocalize my emotions and deal with it in other ways. I'm sure it would still help, but like it's expensive. <laughs> and my, and like that's another issue. Like they make like medicine so expensive, and therapy. Like you, I'm sure you, like there are so many um, ways you can get free therapy. Like you can. Like there's all these apps that are always advertised on Facebook, and I'm I haven't tried them myself, but I'm sure there's stuff out there. There should always there's always some type of support. It's just a matter of our economy and the way that our country is set up. Uh, medic medication, at least, and all that medical infrastructure isn't the best for people with mental illnesses. Which I definitely found out when I was in the mental hospital because that <laughs> reform is 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 definitely something that we need to look at in the, the near future as a society. Absolutely. I, um, um, you made a good point. I, I wanted to, to add on to uh, something really great that stuck with me that one of my psychiatrists had told me about medication is, you know, there's everybody pretty much has a baseline of this is this is happy to sad scale, I guess you would say there's a baseline, there's a middle line that everybody's at people with depression start below. Absolutely. And then people with bipolar, they'll start at the lows, and then they'll go above the middle line to manic and so what what medication should be doing or is doing is if you're dealing with depression the medication will only take you back to the middle line that does not mean that when you take medication you're going to be you're going to feel amazing you're going to feel so happy that is on you just like matt was saying that's on you to put in the work to raise that level higher than the baseline like that's all it's going to do and, and when people try to take medication they just automatically assume that they're going to jump up and feel amazing but it brings them here and they don't understand that and they're still like why am i feeling this way and that's basically why a lot of people stop taking medication it's just it's just understanding how that how that's supposed to work and that it's not the um one for all kind of saving technique yeah and like uh I, I was also saying with uh, mental illnesses like besides depression and even with different forms of depression there are instances where you need to be on medication because mm. it does exist physically as a chemical imbalance in your head and there are times where you're not going to feel better unless that imbalance is corrected at least partially through and that can only be done through medication like as good as therapy is it can't change how your brain physically works to that extent um and if you have something like bipolar um you probably should be on medication you can't just stop taking that because it does so much in trying to balance those chemicals in your head um and you won't be able to make the progress that you want to make if you don't have that help absolutely so i'm not i'm not bashing medication and saying that it's wrong i'm just saying i guess a healthy advice would be if you're going to start trying medication to help yourself understand that it is a long process you have to yes. go through probably more than two or three types of medication in order to find something that actually works for you so don't give up on that like like it's really easy to give up on the first or second like type of medication that you're going through. five times before i found a medication that would actually do anything so you have like there's almost absolutely going to be a medication out there because there's so many different kinds you just have to be persistent because there are there's there, there, the first couple ones you try you might not feel anything at all or you might feel completely wrong it's 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 a hard process to go through it there's a duality to it I'm also not saying you sh you have to take medication. And, and what yeah. Matt was saying, some cases you kind of do, like with bipolar, that you absolutely need something to help. Otherwise, you're it's not going to work out. But, but in some cases, like mine, I think, I, I, I'm not on medication right now. I haven't been for quite a while. Yeah, um, me either. But for me, in my standpoint of psychology, my uh, major that I have been going into, I, I feel like I'm not... I'm not on the side of medication, and I'm very biased on that. I feel like there's so many other techniques that'll help for the people who, who may not need to take medication. There's, there's cognitive uh, behavioral training. There is ACT, which is something new. If, if you want to look up any of these, they're all abbreviations. Definitely yeah. helpful. There's behavioral modification, which is changing the way that you go through life, which can help 
bring up, you know, a more positive state of mind, I guess. There's positive psychology going into that, which definitely helps you think a little bit more positively about life. Um, and I guess that brings to a weird topic, going back to a myth. I don't know how you feel about this, Matt, but what, what's, the, what's your thoughts about people saying it's just a mindset? It's, that can be very destructive. Because yes, but also no. Um, like, uh, so when I was saying how medicine can be, like, it, like it can be hard to change the physical nature of your brain without medication, it's not impossible. You can change how your brain physically works through therapy or through changing your mindset, but it's not something that just happens like that. It's something where you like, you have to keep at it and then slowly over months or years, you can change your brain structure to work in a more positive way. And if you have a chemical imbalance, it's not going to go away, obviously, but like you can manage it better. Um, so it is just a mindset, but it's not something where you can be like, ah, oh, so dismissive about it. Like it's just a mindset because you, you have to, it's, it's anything's just a mindset. Uh, it's just, it doesn't always mean that you can change it like that. It's a slow process. I, I would say I agree that it's a yes and no. It's definitely something serious that you have to be aware of. It's not just a mindset of thinking negatively, but it, it does, the, the mental illnesses do affect your mindset and being able to change your mindset about certain things, like through positive psychology, thinking a little bit more positively about uh, things that you're going through in life is can help to lead in the direction of, you know, being able to cope with what you're going through. Absolutely. I think yeah. there's, there's both sides to it. I just don't like when people just say that because it, it's very ignorant. Yeah. It's just like, it makes whoever you say that to would makes them feel like you're just not acknowledging the struggles that they're dealing with on a daily basis. Cause like even me having made as pro much progress as I have, it's still a daily battle and it's still something where I have to put in effort every single day. So it's not just a mindset. It's something where like, it's a mindset that I have to work to maintain. So it's, it's not as easy as like just doing some yoga and feeling good. Like I, a lot of times I can't, like I wouldn't be able to do yoga cause I cannot work up the energy to actually sit there and do it. Like I, for me, like now with the mindset, I will like uh, catch myself feeling like I, I want to isolate myself. And I, when I catch that, I will make myself like hang out with someone who I feel really close to and I can feel like comfortable in being myself around. And that's a good way for me of changing my mindset and catching myself and making myself not relapse or slide back. Um, but it's something where like, there's always gonna be that instance of me wanting to slide back, me wanting to relapse and me having to be like, no, we're not doing this today. We're gonna get, we're gonna get past it. It's, it's, you have to work at it. And this is going to be a little personal for me, but as far as relapse goes, I feel like I'm doing really well lately. Um, it's been quite a long time. I have dealt with, um, addiction to substance abuse. And I feel like that, that probably happens for a lot of, a lot of people dealing with these illnesses. Um, I, a couple years back started uh, smoking cigarettes. I got into cocaine from a, a co-worker and I did that for like many months, wasting a lot of money off of it just because of the, the state of distress that I was in. I finally was able to overcome that over certain things. Like there's things, it was basically just motivation change. You know, the girlfriend that I was dating at the time left me because of that. I absolutely wanted to make that change afterwards because I felt like no, nobody I would ever be with should have to go through those kind of things. And just seeking help made, just talking to a therapist made me understand that those not, not quite the right thing to do. And so I've, I've able to overcome those sort of things. Um, and it's, I feel, I feel better now. I don't know, but there is always a, a time of relapse and it's, it's good to be careful and try Absolutely. to work around what's going on every single day. Cause there, it's, it's possible at any time. Yeah. It's always going to be there in the back of your mind. Like yeah. as much as you try and like ignore it. And it, like, for me, I've also dealt with addiction for me. Like I, I drank very heavily throughout a lot of my high school years. Um, I, I was addicted to sex. I would use people and like, I've, felt very manipulative and I kind of like I push 
away the idea of me being a person. So I would like mani- like pull the strings and feel like I was manipulating us. Like like I wasn't even living my life. I was just playing it in like a video game or something. Um, and I was addicted to that feeling of being in control and in power. Um, and like it took me a long time to like correct my viewpoints on certain things and being able to like look at myself and my relationships in a positive way and not feel like I was putting on a mask or faking a persona. Um, and even so, like with my drinking, I, I took five years off where I just would not drink at all. And then now I've started drinking again because like I had some issues um, last year. But even so, I monitor my drinking very heavily. Um, I only allow myself to drink two or three times a week at most. So that's why there's certain nights where I'll just not drink. <laughs> um, and I, f- I feel much more comfortable being able to manage all that now. But even so, like there's there there's that fear that like I'm gonna one day just let go and go back to who I was. I do not like the person that I used to be. Um, so that fear actually, I use that as a driving force to stay better. I have this mantra where I will tell myself that any day where I'm not spent bettering myself, even if it's just by a little bit, is a day wasted. And that mantra is what keeps me going and like makes me uh, make all this forward progress. Because even if it's just like a, like sitting down and working on something for a couple minutes, that, that's a little bit of self-improvement and progress. And that's moving forward, even if it's just by a step. If I keep on moving forward, then eventually I'm going to get to the place where I want to be. And like even just now, right now, is where I feel like I'm at. I, I can start to feel like I'm at the place where I want to be. Like on the me, I have envisioned myself to be like all those years ago when I started working towards this. It took me like six years to get to a point where I'm feeling comfortable and like I'm actually happy with who I am as a person. And it, was, it, it just, it's crazy to say this six years because it feels like it was so much longer. It's so hard like just to make progress like that. It's because it's so slow. Damn, dude, you spoke the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> I gotta say, that was when I was younger. I I hated myself too, and I do use that as uh, the same like fear for motivation to be better every single day. Because when I was younger, I did the same shit. I hurt so many people because of what I was going through and like putting that on them in some way. I definitely felt like I was a manipulative person. I was I was almost in the same boat as you, and. The, now that I'm able to look back at on, on all of that, I'm able to use it as a source for like, I don't ever want to be this way again. And so I need to try my absolute best to be a better person every single day and be the best that I can be. And that's a that's a beautiful point that you brought up. That is a good way to look at it. Um, I do want to get into um, maybe talking about more of um, how you overcame your struggles personally like through dealing with this what what are some techniques or things that you've used to to cope through the days um so for me coping skills are something that was brought up to me the very first time when i was in the mental hospital and i didn't really understand what it was at first because like everyone was giving off like reading or something like that and i was like i don't really have anything that like i guess writing but like and so it took me a long time to realize what it actually meant to have a coping ability and for me, as, I don't know if this carries over to anyone else, but for me, I also have to skirt the line a little because while writing is a good coping skill for me, like for me, I will write poetry and like get all my thoughts out on paper like that. And doing that helps me to deal with my emotions and like not keep them so internalized. But it can also drag me down because a lot of times I'll get stuck in this like trap of writing this horrible, like depressive self, like deprecative poetry. And I'll realize that, like, it's not making me feel better. I'm actually getting worse because I'm doing it. Um, so for me, like, I have, I, even with my coping skills, I have to manage them. So I'll write things. And then if I feel myself, like, slipping into a trap like that, I'll force myself to give myself a different prompt. And I'll try and write, like, concept poetry or something where it's about something else, like an idea or someone else or a story. Um, then also my music I use my music a lot like um, when I first started like working to get better I would turn off all the lights and I'd go in and I'd play piano and I play these improv pieces and try and like feel my way out to the keys Um, 
today, I think my coping me method is when I get home from work or a hard day, I will just sit in the car for a couple minutes, not really dissociating, but like meditating, really, just to like collect all my thoughts and just be okay with not thinking too much about anything. Just let everything flow through my mind. That's usually when I write all my poetry or something. Um, those moments like that, giving myself that little break, that is very helpful to me today. Um, I don't think I would have been able to do that when I was really depressed because it's just, it would be so scary to be alone with my thoughts back then. But um, I also tried to change my personality to the point where like, uh, because I felt so bad about lying all the time and felt like I was, was putting on this persona, I tried to kind of let my, my true self shine through. And you got to realize that like you are going to be a different version of yourself with whoever you're around. That's that's normal. Um, for me, like a lot of times I felt like I was hiding things um, because I felt like I was different people at different times. Um, today, I feel like I can be very much so myself, no matter who I'm around. Like, I feel like I can be very honest. I try and be very open because I felt like before I was hiding everything and that just made me feel worse and bad all the time. So now that I, I've changed myself into this very open person and I'm not hiding anything, I feel like it's generally improved all my relationships. Um, I feel better as a person because I'm able to go and do things that I never would have done before because I can put myself out there. Just little things like that. You got to make little adjustments. There's no like, for me, I would say there's no real way of coping. It's just a matter of looking at your life and readjusting at different times and giving yourselves that little break to like, be able to work through things like you just you have to make those little adjustments and you don't can't do it all at once because like for me i started at a very low point i had destroyed my life i had no relationships i came out of my hospital and i did not know how to talk to people didn't know how to make friends i didn't know any of that i had to slowly build my way up there because i remember feeling like i got through my depression but like i had no close friends so i felt so alone and like, I did not know how to talk to people. I didn't know how to fix that. Cause I was like, I spent all these years just like masterminding things. I didn't know how to talk to people, honestly, as, as weird as that is to say, and learning that took so long. And I, I like, I tried things and like failed and it's, you gotta be okay with failure. Like, because it's going to happen. It just happens. It happens to everyone, but especially when you're trying to get better, cause you'll try different coping me mechanisms. You'll try to fix yourself in ways that won't work. And you've got to be able to adapt to that, not let it bring you down. You just got to keep on moving forward, no matter what tries to bring you down, what, no matter what tries to bring you back. You have to adapt and realize that you can't affect all the circumstances of your life, but you can ex always af affect what's going on inside of yourself. That was heavy. <laughs> um, <laughs> as far as for me, uh, similar to you you're writing coping or or playing music i was definitely a music music kind of person but more of singing i guess i i love sad songs if anybody knows me they know i love sad and sappy songs because they're so beautiful uh and so I'll, I'll sing i'll sing those songs in my car or something you know alone whatever to kind of voice how i'm feeling because most of those songs are pretty much how i'm feeling most of the time um, mm -hmm. but also on the other hand, it does, it does turn into a negative as well, because it'll bring me more down. Like that's, that's what happens. And it's, I still do it. It's never going to go away, I think. But I just understanding that that can change my mood is definitely a thing. as far as yeah, coping, you know. coping with other things. Sorry. Do you want to say something? Okay. I was just thinking, you just gotta be aware of it. Like, yeah, I think that's important. Like I said, awareness is key. Absolutely. It's the first step to to fixing anything that you're going through. Um, I think I just want to, I, I have this in my head. I, it's a, it's a technique that you can use. Um, if you're into some sort of meditation, um, I, I use it every now and then when I really need it, I should use it more like consistently, but I'll just kind of give it a general gist of it. Cause I feel it might be helpful for some people, um, in the morning or at night, you don't want to fall asleep when you're doing this, but you, you want to get relaxed either laying down or sitting up and just relaxing everything in your body and you the the, the goal of it it's, it's it's a positive psychology technique the goal of it is to just meditate 
breathe in, breathe out like four counts each and just focus on your breathing. Just only focus on your breathing and thoughts will come through your head, negative or whatever it is. It could be like what I have to get at the store tomorrow. You just, you, you let it go. You, you, you acknowledge that the thought is there while you're breathing and focusing on your breathing. And then you go back to your breathing. You go back to focusing on that and, and the thought goes away. And that's basically trying to teach you that all these thoughts that are going through your head, that's, that's all they are. You, you just acknowledge them like clouds flying in the sky. Oh, there's that. I'm thinking of that right now. But now it's, now it's gone. And it's, it's trying to help teach not to dwell on, on those thoughts, which can definitely build into your depression. I think that's a very helpful thing that I've been doing lately. Yes, I think that's definitely that almost exactly what I do like when I get home and I'm sitting in my car because it's very important to realize that your thoughts are your thoughts and you are in control of them. Like you can you can do whatever you want up here because it's your head. Um, if depression, if can feel like that control is taken away from you, but you can reclaim that control. And that's that's the important step of getting past it and being able to cope with it. Absolutely. Um, other coping, I don't know. I guess the main points for me is being aware of your situation, going and talking to somebody, whether that's therapy or a group of people that are able to help you without, you know, damaging any sort of relationship. Definitely recommend therapy over that. Um, I like to live by the mantra, keep everything in moderation which seems to be working very well for me. So I don't, you know, you don't want to drink too much, but you don't want to drink too little. You want to have fun. I mean, it's, it's, it's a good way to think about everything. I mean, so you don't want to think too much, but obviously you need thoughts and it's kind of self-explanatory, obviously, but living in moderation has been a very helpful tool for me to, to get over everything I'm doing. And definitely, I think, although it's, it, it's hard to do and, you definitely don't want to do it pushing yourself out of your comfort zone doing things that you don't normally do will just help it, it actually will make you happy at the end of the day like at the end of that day at least that you're doing something and it, you don't have to be so afraid of, of getting out of your comfort zone like when i was in high school i was so afraid i isolated myself and what did i decide to do my senior year i did like <laughs> the dumbest okay so i did this this dancing competition dancing with the staff where you dance with a teacher i won that shit but i put myself out there to, <laughs> to do that yes i can pull i can what is it called <laughs> i can back it up anyways <laughs> I, <laughs> I also did uh the male pageant show um and i was runner up for that that doesn't matter i i oh my goodness i sang in front of crowds when i was not even okay with me singing to anybody but myself like and i gotta say i look back on that and i'm very proud of myself for doing those things i feel like that did make me more confident i guess in one sense which definitely helps with my depression more confident about myself and just more more comfortable with doing things out of my comfort zone and, and that just makes you feel so much better i i promise i guarantee it <laughs> absolutely I remember like back when I was like going through all this, uh, like my defense mechanism was my ego. And like, I, so I would act with like, I had this huge confidence and I was like, I got like, oh, I'm the best thing in the world and y'all got to acknowledge it. And that was how I like hid how insecure I was. And I always like acted like I didn't care what anyone thought while at the same time I was obsessed with what everyone thought about me because <laughs> I felt horrible about myself. Um, now that I'm better, I still like I've, ad I've adapted and I've kind of like railed in my ego a little bit, but like at the same time, I like, I, if you move with self-confidence, people will react to that, especially if you're not like arrogant or full of yourself with it. And you'll be able to do things that like normally would scare you. Um, and I'm at the point now where like, it's not that I don't care what people think, but at the same time, I don't let it bother me. Like I used to. I'm able to push past that and that opens up so many avenues because you can do so much more if you're not concerned with how it's going to end up or how people are going to perceive you because of it. And if it doesn't work out, then you can be like, huh, I tried that. That was stupid. And then you get a story out of it. <laughs> 
And I think so, that's I think that's going to build through experience and through age because I I agree with you that when I was younger I was also that exact way where I faked confidence or like when when everything that people said hurt my feelings I just played it off I acted like I didn't care and sometimes I wanted to tell myself you don't care about any of this shit you know and and then I slowly grew into a person who was actually somewhat confident <laughs> with who they were and what they were doing and didn't let things bother them so much. And I've also turned into a very blunt person. Like I, I've lied so much uh, because of w what I was going through and not just that, just in, in general in life with my relationships and whatnot. I lie to people. I've, I've cheated in relationships very bad and I, I'm not proud of it whatsoever. But I mean, it's sorry this is tough tough to talk about it's right. I, got it. I mean just being more open for me or being more honest about everything or being blunt in general getting everything i need to say out has made me feel so much better like i agree. i, yeah. I want to be an honest person for everybody because i feel like that's so much better than trying to be somebody who you're not I 100% agree with you. That's in, in fact, that's entirely what I, I've tried to do. Um, I think it's better to be 100% honest and say the wrong thing than it is to lie and feel like you're not being genuine. Because at the end of the day, I can live with myself if I say something stupid, if I'm if I truly felt that because I felt it. So I mean, it's out there now. And like it, it does, at least I can be like, all right, well, at least I know what happened now that I got that out of out of me. And feel more whole as a person because i always used to feel like empty and when i'm genuine and honest uh, regardless of what it's about i feel more complete and like i feel more human when i'm doing it i feel like this definitely delves into development <laughs> just development in general of being a kid to to growing up and having all these life lessons um yeah i mean i thought that that went really well i do want to open it now um we're gonna open it up to chat discussion so if you guys have anything that you want to um share with us about this experience if you have any questions for us anything like that feel free to feel free to chat out if not we'll yep. just keep rambling <laughs> i'm very good at rambling <laughs> And hello, everybody. I, I hello. hope you understand that I <laughs> I wanted to have a good conversation and not uh, get distracted by all the chat. But I am very um, appreciative of all you being here and supporting this. I know there's some of you like in this chat that are dealing with these things, too, and uh, I've come here for some sort of help <laughs> yeah it means a lot that everyone's here like because it's very important to me that we that we talk about this a lot of times i think that that stigma around mental health it really holds us back as a society as a people um because nothing is going to change unless we talk about it unless we make it normal to just be honest and be able to talk about how we're feeling because there's nothing wrong with how we feel because we feel that way and like not talking about it doesn't change the fact that we all deal with these issues. So to be able to talk about it in an open way and be able to have everyone listen, that it's the most important thing that you can do just to put yourself out there. It's also a very serious situation right now in the world that we live in where, you know, I don't want to put up statistics, but 90% of suicides happen because of depression and mental illness like it's a it's a big thing and especially with social medias right now and everything kind of and the loneliness of like even now current event quarantine like this is bringing people down and and having more awareness we also we just need to change the stigma because all we're doing with the way that we're thinking about this is discluding these people with mental illnesses and making it more likely that they're not going to be around because of all the shit going on. I mean, if we just change the way we think about this and accept these people with open arms, uh, things would be so much better going forward. Yeah. And definitely talking yeah. about it is the first step. Absolutely. Like, even if you don't have depression, if you're able to be honest about how you feel, 
and everyone is just able to be honest about how they feel, I think that would alleviate so much tension and stress in so many of these issues because the number one thing that like would bring me down is the fact that I felt like I couldn't talk about it to anyone. And internalizing it, it just makes things worse. It exasperates any symptoms that you may be dealing with. Absolutely. Euler, you, you just said legends. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, <Euler. laughs> I would add in that it's important to surround yourself with positive people and maybe distance yourself from negative people helps your mental state yeah absolutely. absolutely I I completely agree with that and that's something I've been working on as well like the the ability to it's it might sound savage the ability to drop people at an instant if I feel that they are negative in any way in my life I have learned to do. I will yeah. drop people if they're not good for me. We need to surround ourselves with with people who actually care and who are positive in this light. Because so many times when you're younger, you'll you'll find that you make friends with people and they're really not good friends to you, or they're not somebody you should be around, or they have a bad influence on you. And it's just it's learning to let go of those people. You don't have to be friends with everybody, and the most common thought that comes in my head is you don't have to not everybody needs to like you you don't have to mm -hmm. try to be liked by everybody and you're not going to be so you have to just accept the fact that some people won't like you and we're all very very different to the point where not no not everybody's gonna like you so you have to find the people that you fit comfortably with and who will help you another thing that i would add on to that is for me the issue for me when i had negative people in my life is when i started getting better I started being able to see why people were the way they were. So I started having sympathy for these people. And at the end of the day, people are dealing with their own issues. And sometimes it does make people end up being bad people. And there's nothing that you, even if you understand why they are the, the way they are, you can't let that affect your own life and how you are dealing with your own issues and making progress on your, by yourself. You have to be able to, you can offer your advice, but at the end of the day, if they don't take you up on it, that's not good for yourself to concern yourself with them and their own issues when it, it's just it's going to take you down because everyone is the way they are for a reason. That's just how it works. So all these people who have like, would be negative people to surround yourself with, they have their own issues. Absolutely. But at the end of the day, it's their own issues and you need to focus on yourself because the number one most important person in your life is always going to be yourself. It's your life. And you have to live it to the best of your ability. So you can't be concerned with everyone else. You have to be able to do what's right for yourself. I think that's another good piece of advice to add. And, and I guess another way to rephrase it is it's okay to be selfish sometimes. It's absolutely okay to be selfish and think about yourself sometimes because like I've been through relationships where the, the other person asks so much of me to the point where I can't even help myself. In, in certain situations, then it's hard when you're dealing with these things because you know it's a constant battle to try to help yourself. So absolutely, you need to sometimes just take days or take time to help yourself rather than constantly lending out arms to other people who are going through this thing. And it's you're not harming them in any way by not helping them for, I mean, that's why you need to seek therapy because it's we're a whole mm. chain of people who need help. <laughs> and it's it, you can't rely on somebody necessarily or you shouldn't i guess rely on somebody to or depend on somebody for help in a sense you kind of have to help yourself and you have to be selfish sometimes and do what's best Absolutely. for you and i'm not saying to just like drop everyone at, at like no like a dime i mean for me whenever i've come into a situation like that i'm uh, from personally i just try and be honest and i'm like listen like i i this is how i feel and like how you feel is, is just not conducive to me being healthy right now like it's just i can't overextend myself like this because it's draining me and i need like i i deal with this depression I, i've been suicidal before and i need to make sure that like i'm able to be at a healthy point in my life and generally if you're honest and you don't make excuses if they're like people will understand if they don't understand then that's on them because you're honest and you've gotten out of the way. That's how I deal with it. That's how I'm able to move past things like that pop up because not everyone out there 
is going to be someone who will listen or understand or even make any effort whatsoever. But if I can make the effort, then I can at least check it off. they be like, all right, I did what I could. I did everything within my power. And I'm not just, and for me, that's not me being selfish. That's me being able to look out for myself and be, because you have to take care of yourself. That, that's what it comes down to. I agree. Uh, Oodles of Noodles says, I came in a bit late, but I suppose I want to ask anyone who has been in a life-changing situation due to mental illness, how do you get the strength to pick yourself back up and progress with life? How do you stop caring about what other people think? I can answer the first part of that. Um, last, Not last year, two years ago now, I had a big shakeup in my life. Was my mom was diagnosed with Lynch syndrome, which is a genetic disorder that pretty much raises your proclivity to cancer by 80%. Um, and since it's genetic, there was a big chance that I had it as well. I still haven't done the testing because I'm terrified. But like that threw me off so much because I was making all this progress. And then to me, it was like a slap in the face because I was like, all right, so I tried, I did all this to because I wanted to live. Like I finally want to live. And I find out like, hey, not going to happen maybe. So for me, that almost made me slide all the way back and like, I almost relapsed entirely there. I was in such a down place. Um, fortunately, I, I have I've got good friends like lovely Mrs. Roboto and uh, other friends who just were able to, to help me realize that just because my situation changed, my perspective shouldn't. Like, doesn't matter how long I'm gonna live. It doesn't matter what's going on in my life. Doesn't matter because at the end, you have to do what's right for you. You have to live your life to the best of your ability. You have to be able to have a ha life that you're proud of and happy. And just because I wasn't maybe not going to live as long as I wanted to doesn't mean that I didn't have the same aspirations or goals or desires as I did before I found out about that. Um, it's just a matter of being able to believe in yourself and be able to get through it no matter what's going on because you can't change the circumstances around you. But you can absolutely... He froze. It's okay. He'll come back. <laughs> Hold on. There you are. You're back. I'm back. Hello. What, what, when did I cut out? I have no idea. <laughs> I was listening and then I got distracted by the freeze frame. Um, so anyways, I was just saying that uh, you can't change the circumstances around you, but you can, you can change your perspective that's the important thing to hold true to like keep on reaching for the same things that you want your dreams whatever you want um because back when i was depressed and suicidal i didn't have any goals for a future i didn't have anything that i want i didn't think i was going to live that long now i have all these goals that i want to reach for and like they're not big lofty goals i just really want to be happy i want to leave my mark on the world i want to do i want to create things to help others and all those are still obtainable no matter what else is going on in my life. And realizing that helped me pull myself back together and not relapse and be able to move forward. Um, so it's just, it's just a matter of perspective. You have to make sure you keep the right perspective because anything can be the end of the world for you if you let it. You, you have to not let things be destructive like that. It's, you got to keep on pushing forward. Absolutely. Um, I can't say I've been in, in crazy life changing situations, oodles. Um, I've been through some rough relationships, but I feel like I'm downplaying that like that. Maybe it is important, but it doesn't feel as big to me as any other thing. But as far as getting the strength to pick yourself back up and progress with life, um, I guess from my experiences, what I've been through, it's hard because you hit rock bottom basically. And, and you almost you're at that stage where you're like, I either choose this option to get out or I choose this option to keep going. And, and you kind of have to, for me, I remind myself why I'm still going. I, I remind myself who's important in my life and how, how it would affect them if I had gone or something because of this, or, you know, who I still, you know, I, I care about a lot of people and I, hurting anybody is on the least of what I want to be doing. Um, so I guess that's one thing is, is reminding yourself, uh, 
of who is still in your life that cares about you and is important to you that, Mm -hmm. you know, and how they might feel in that situation, putting yourself in their shoes. Um, I, to add on to that real quick, like, uh, there's this, there's a nursing motto around there that like, you can't live for someone else. That's not true. If you like, you can absolutely live for someone else. If that's what keeps you going, it's whatever keeps you going, keeps you going. For me, when I was going through all, all this at once, I couldn't live for myself because I didn't care about myself. I thought I was a horrible person. I didn't care if I lived or died, but I cared about my little sisters. And having that is what drove me to the point where now I do care about myself and I can live for myself because like I have all these things that I can obtain now because I, I feel so confident in my ability to do it that I want my future and I'm fighting for it and I won't stop no matter what. And like if whatever keeps you going is what you live for if you can't live for yourself keep on fighting till you can yeah and i think your other point how do you stop caring about what other people think i think there's there's two things that i can bring up for that and it's very cliche the first one but you know love yourself like that is the best way because once i started gaining confidence in myself and started realizing that you know this is who i am and i i'm okay with that then i stopped caring as much about what people think about me or what you know what people say about me that i've dealt with so much drama in my life that i've i guess i've learned to have some thick skin i i don't know but it's just being okay with who you are i guess is the best and and there's a whole lot of how, how to get around to that but i think through experience and awareness you kind of learn that and as well as that um knowing or being aware that the right people in your life the positive people in your life are not gonna think badly of you they love you that's Mm -hmm. not gonna happen so you're probably just overthinking that situation and for the people who are not good for your life or something and they still talk crap about you or they, they they're thinking these things about you who cares like they're they're not a part of your life they're not a big part of your life you don't really care about them you know in that sense so why should you care what they have to say and also what i try to think is nobody knows my life and who i am but me nobody knows the whole story of everything that's going on inside my head and how i'm feeling so why should i let their opinions speak to who i am because they don't know me they know maybe one thing that I did or one thing that happened with me. They know one thing about me, whatever, that I'm dealing with mental illness. They don't know anything else. So my opinion about myself is the most important thing. And that's what people need to work on is, is who they are, who they think they are and who, who they should be. I agree 100 percent. And then like also, if you want to be confident, you can also absolutely just fake it till you make it because that's generally like before i was able to be comfortable with myself i just would pretend i was some confident confident person and then i slowly became able to do all that stuff now i'm at the point where i like cash said i have these close friends who i know i can be myself around and they're going to love me regardless so no matter what i do they're going to be accepting and if anyone else is then oh well i still got them so what what's uh what's the big deal that's that's generally what i tell myself and so that's that helps me so much to do whatever i want because at the end of the day if i if i want to do it then i'm going to do it because i don't have any real stakes in what other people think um and the only the only control that people have over you is the control that you give them because you're living your own life and you gotta you gotta remind yourself of that I don't know if I agree with fake it till you make it. There are some good things to it. Um, absolutely. I think temporarily there's good things to it. Uh, however, I know that faking it till you make it is a sort of repression of your feelings. So trying to be confident, you repress those sensitive feelings of, of trying to care what people think or whatever, or in that kind of subject. And that can, that can damage you as well. I mean, it's, I guess it's just more of a rocky road. Fake it fake it till you make it is more of a, right. a a bridge that you you may or may not want to cross um i think it's more of just just reflecting on who you are like like i said before if 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 you get to a point where you can figure out exactly who you are what you want in life what you're doing you know that, that is the best 
best place for you to be and that'll make you more confident in yourself in general and i think that's what life is right now for me at least and for others is taking that journey to try to figure out exactly who i am and that i'm okay with that whatever it may be and that right there that's true confidence i think it really depends on where you're starting from um because like your self view like becoming confident like that that is that is the healthiest way and the most important way of getting there like there is also there there's always like it's faking it till you make it works for like almost most things but it's not always the best healthiest route to get there um because a lot of times like you don't feel sincere about it um it's very hard to be you have to have the right mindset if you were to do it like that um for me it took me a while to make my confidence real and like cash it didn't really come about until i was more comfortable with myself um so while it does work it don't doesn't doesn't really work unless you take more steps towards it you have to be able to eventually get to the point where you are able to feel comfortable about doing it even if you are pushing yourself outside your comfort zone you have to be able to be certain of what you're doing I think the goal, and I've learned this through classes, and I know it's why I don't agree with that uh, fake it till you make it, is is there's there's a a mirror that you look into and you see exactly what you think you are or who you are. You see what you think who you are. And then there's who you actually are. So the way that you think you are might be biased and, and you know manipulated by other people's thoughts, but who you really are is who you are. And the, the goal is to try to match up that. So you're thinking, you know exactly who you are. I mean, like, that's the best part of it. And so when you're, if you try to fake confidence, there's a disconnect between those two things. And so you, you, you think that you're hot shit or whatever, you know, confident, but you're really not on the inside. And that disconnect, it can actually cause more problem than, than be good. So yeah, I'm just being, being cautious. Seeing as I've, actually had issues from that i would <laughs> agree with you entirely <laughs> um it's a slippery slope absolutely <laughs> cyrus is going to be super real right now i'm waiting yes, for I'm it right. <laughs> i'm glad we're able to to talk about this and and help help all you guys maybe understand or 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 feel a little more connected with yeah. with us uh, let's see Beck Booba when I repress my feelings I tried to end it six years ago being able to understand myself and others is the best I struggled until I took that moment to understand that other people felt like this that's a very big moment in your life when you know that you're not alone and that's definitely a really good first step into to getting better and i completely agree like mm -hmm. yeah i took five years of going through this thinking i was all alone before i realized i wasn't if i can make just one person realize that they're not alone in this feeling then for me that that's that's what i want to accomplish by like spreading all this awareness because i don't want anyone to feel like they're alone in this because no one is ever alone there's always someone out there who's going to be able to understand what you're going through. Even if you think that you were the worst person on this earth, there's someone who understands why you feel the way you do. That's why I'm so very lucky to have Matt in my life because we are so similar, <laughs> so similar of people. I feel like we have a very shared connection on, um, at least with what we're both going through in this sense. Sorry, you have to Absolutely. retype, retype Cyrus. <laughs> I hit a I major that. breaking point. Oh, I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> I hit a major breaking point that made me stop caring what people think about me. If you like me, awesome. If not, oh well. I don't remember what happened to trigger it. I can definitely talk about that. <laughs> I mean, there's there's points in life when you tell yourself, like, I can't keep caring about everything. I'm going to care about nothing because my emotions are so all over the place that why not just stop them completely and just pretend like i don't care about anything it's a very good defense mechanism um i would say there there's also a bit of a danger about it um because you can't um you can't not care what anyone thinks at all 
because that's kind of that, that disconnects yourself from society um you have to be able to acknowledge what people think just don't let it affect you i'm gonna let it's, it's, cyrus sorry i'm gonna let cyrus finish his point here and then and then i'll get to julia Maybe. <laughs> okay, we'll go ahead and read Julia, and then we'll get back to get back to you, Cyrus. Been watching and really enjoying this while at work today. Really love and appreciate you guys for sharing and opening up. Would you have any thoughts to share on people who feel safe in their mental illness or become attached to it? Like sometimes it's kind of a safe zone, even if it's not actually safe. It's an interesting question. I as uh, someone who is an artist this definitely hits home with me because uh there's from there's always that that uh that feeling like what if i can't create my art if i'm not in a low place what if i can't express myself if i'm not feeling this way like it because with depression being so closely tied to you it def definitely can become part of your personality it can be a scary thing to move away from um the important thing is to realize that what's important is your your health and your happiness so while those things may be comfortable uh it's not healthy and you have to be able to move past it regardless of what that may look like because i'm a completely different person since i moved past my depression and like been able to, to deal with it um and that's scary change is the number one thing that like humanity opposes it's it's natural to not want to change because change is hard and change is different and different is scary um but change is necessary. Like nothing goes anywhere without change. So you have to be able to put yourself outside of your comfort zone for your own good. And just realizing that and being able to acknowledge that maybe you would be better off if the, like you were able to deal with this in a healthier way is more important than staying comfortable and staying where you are now. Like that work, you have to realize it, it's worth it. it. It is. It's so worth it just to put that in and, and become someone else, become someone better than me that you want to be. That's, that's the concept that I was obsessed with when I was getting through my depression and everything is that I was always like this, this ideal version of myself. And it's still someone that I, like I fight for to this day. And you just gotta, you gotta draw yourself away from those negative thoughts. So that, that, that temptation to pull yourself back there just because it's something that, you know, and it's something that will coddle you it's this isn't your depression isn't a friend it's a disease and it's not something that's going to be there for you it's something that is draining you and feeding off you you, you got to fight it i think a good way to think about it is your safe zone in your mental illness and that's why labeling is an issue labeling yourself as uh, dealing with depression can be an issue that's a that's a topic but you can see it as it's you're in a glass house and that is your safe space and that is that is your um, mental illness that you feel safe in or in, or something else that you feel safe in and that's why i'm talking about um getting out of your comfort zone getting out of that glass house because it's so much more beneficial and also it can be very dangerous what you're doing trying to stay in your safe zone because it's it's a glass house it, and it's going to it can shatter very easily by very small things and it will probably happen in your life if you're staying in that safe zone and what happens when your house breaks down you have nothing uh, you feel so low and it, it just becomes so much worse so don't I'm not saying not to feel safe <laughs> but in in the case of trying to hide behind the label of mental illness or what you're dealing with in order to feel okay it, there's a good and a bad it's it's good to feel like you're not alone but it's good to put yourself out there and try to get past that because that can be a dangerous territory. Absolutely. Don't settle. You got you got to strive for something. Don't settle. That's that's the point of life, you know. Even when you're not dealing with depression, you always want to strive for something because that what gives life its purpose, its meaning. It life is inherently meaningless unless you give it that meaning. And Cyrus, okay. I can't really say that I love myself or even like myself. I'm bipolar and have major trust issues with people in general, and I have trouble accepting and believing compliments. 
I do know that I could be a worse person than I am. To me, I'm just a guy trying to survive. Not anything special, just a human. But humans are special. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was a little like... It's true though. Anyways, uh, <laughs> like, okay. Accepting compliments, blame compliments. Uh, that, that comes with confidence, absolutely. Um, and, and trying to learn more about yourself, that, that will help. Um, I think for me, it's like what Matt said, if you can just do one thing a day to improve yourself and be the best person you can be, that is the best thing you can do for yourself. Even if that one small thing for your, for your start is, I got out of bed today, that you can count that as a win in your book. And that might help you realize that you're, the fact that you're striving towards being a better person means you are a good person. Like you are already there. You're just still trying to work out all those issues or, or flaws that you're trying to deal with. I think that definitely that'll help that feeling that you're a worse person because you're, you're not. You're a great guy. And I think I think it's just coming to learn who you are yourself and being OK with that. I know um, I, I can't speak to the bipolar um, mental illness because I, I don't have, you know, experience with that. And that can be very difficult. Um, but yeah, uh, as far as trust issues go, I'm still dealing with that as well. I get hurt in my relationships all the time to the point where I feel like they, I can't trust anybody to tell them anything. And that's, that's definitely a, still a process for me. <laughs> so I can't say I've, I've figured that out. Yeah, I, I definitely also have trust issues. I have trust issues, I have abandonment issues, like stemming back from my childhood with like my biological father and all that. It's just a matter of you just keep on working at it. And like I can say from my perspective now um, of working at it just a little bit every now and then, just like putting myself out there and like working on being the me I want to be, like a better version of myself. My personality literally has changed three times with proof. Like I've taken the Myers-Briggs test at three different points in my life <laughs> and gotten a completely different personality to uh, like profiles because i've changed so much as a person as my life has gone on if you make the effort and you have a clear view of who you would want to be like even if you just think like oh i don't i want to be more trusting if you put yourself out there and you trust a little bit more every day and you take these risks even if you fail you're still making progress and eventually you'll get to a point where you look back and you be like i feel like i'm so much better than i was and that's what keeps me going because like anytime I feel like I'm slipping down, if I look back and I'm like, look at all this progress I made. And it's so much easier to move forward now because I can just, I know, I know that I can do it. So you just have to do it so that you know that you can do it. And that helps in itself. Excellent. <laughs> I completely agree. That was great. Um, I guess when a person lives with something for so long, it could become their identity. Yeah, I guess I, I guess I, um, I do pair myself with my depression quite often, <laughs> unfortunately, because it is a big part of my life. Um, but you don't have to let it define you. You know, outside of that, you have you have interests, you have passions. It may be hard to see them when you're like very unmotivated due to depression, but they are there. Like you. And that's what coming going outside of your comfort zone will do as well is find you more passion or more motivation to do things. Um, so it, I guess in some sense, yeah, it's part it's a part of my identity, but it's not who I am. That'll definitely stick with me through my whole life. And that's yeah. okay. And like, I remember back when I got out of Devereaux, like my that was the hospital I was staying at, like. I remember feeling like I didn't have an identity because it was so defined by my trauma and my depression. The ma the thing is that identity is fluid. It's not something that is just written at birth and exists for the rest of your life. You define your own identity. So if you want to do something, then do it. If you want to be something, then be it. You can be whatever you want to be. You don't have to let anything define you. It can be part of your identity if you want it to be, but it doesn't have to be. It's a matter of how you define your own identity. Like all those labels and everything, we, we made them up. Labels, every label is made up. Like the entire language is made up. So you get to define what, whoever you want to be. Identity is something that changes all the time. Like I'm completely different than I was a week ago. 
I, I can be whoever I want in this moment. And this moment is the only moment that matters to me right now. Uh, that's that's the perspective I try and take when I when I was building myself up and creating this new identity for myself, because like it can be hard to move on when you define yourself so much by your failures in your past and the trauma that you've dealt, you're, you, that you're dealt with. But you can move on past it. You can be something completely different if you want to. It's just a matter of taking the time and the effort to get there. And I think we have to be a little cautious when when saying um, that you don't have to that doesn't have to have to be a part of your identity because we don't want to get that confused with repression of it like trying to pretend that it doesn't exist like yeah, yeah. you don't have to let it define you and who you are but you the 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 reason why I let it be part of my identity in my life is because I need to be open about it and, and know that it's there. So I, I can't sweep it under the rug unless, or things get like much worse for me. So I guess I just wanted to make it more clear that that's not what we mean, I think, by, by that. Absolutely. Because like, you know me, like my depression, I let it become part of my identity because that's how I deal with it. And the fact that I can speak about it so openly and, and like get it out there, it helps me be okay with who I am. Um it's just a matter you don't have to let it define you it doesn't go away it's always going to be there but you get to choose what you let define your personality if your depression isn't a personality trait your personality will exist separate from from your trauma it just can be hard to see it as cash said until you start dealing with it exactly um, oodles of noodles says do you believe there's a genetic predisposition to mental illness or is it more of a you see your parents do something and you take on those traits there's absolutely um there's absolutely cases of genetic um predis that's, that's what matt was talking about with the chemical imbalances in your brain there, that's that's very true and valid and it's been tested like that that is a part of it however it, it can also come from your environment there's two ways so i don't i don't know personally if if mine is genetic I think mine is more environmental, but I can't say for sure, you know, because it can happen from when you're being raised, the, the way you're raised, the, the way you go about school, how sensitive you are. Um, yeah, I mean, there's so many factors in the environment that can do that for you, but it can also be genetic that can lead to these kind of issues. Yeah, as someone who has both, like, because I have depression and PTSD, um, I believe my depression was probably genetic. I, I can absolutely see that running in my family. Like addiction runs in the family. Genes play a big part of who we are. However, like I also have my PTSD and I feel like I would have gotten my depression regardless, but my PTSD kind of triggered my depressive spells. Um, so it does, at the end of the day is that it doesn't matter where it came from. You have to just focus on the fact that you have it and you know you can deal with it. Um, I used to obsess, especially with my PTSD, I obsessed over where it came from and not knowing drove me crazy. I would make things up because I, it's better to have a fake reason than it is to have no reason at all why you're feeling the way you are. But it's important to realize that, that it doesn't matter where it came from. All trauma is different and all trauma is perceived differently due to the individual. And the same thing with depression. It's not so much of where it came from. It's a matter of dealing with it and recognizing it in yourself. One thing I want to add to that, <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I'm disagreeing so so much. It's not necessarily a disagree, but um, if it is an environmental cause, it, it kind of it kind of does matter the difference yeah. between the two. If there is an environmental cause for why you have this mental illness or depression, it is possible that is through people in your life, like constant in your life. Like it could be through your parents, like the way that they raised you. And the reason why that's very important to know and why I personally am, am starting to try to, to figure out why I'm, I'm the way that I am with depression or what might be the root cause is because if that's still going on in your life currently, it can still be setting you back or having you relapse or, or, or damaging you in some way. And that might be something to look at getting fixed, whether it's uh, repairing a relationship with somebody or, or such like that, you know? I still think it's important slightly. Yes. Thank you. That That's important clarification. When I was talking about it, I see it from my personal perspective, my PTSD is something that happened, an event in the past. Mm -hmm. And my depression comes from my chemical imbalance. So it, it is 
different for me in my perspective. If it's an environmental cause, it absolutely does matter. And it is something that you will need to address. And even with PTSD, I had to address what caused it and I had to find it. It's, it doesn't, it's not that it doesn't matter where it comes from. It's just, it's not something that you should obsess over. Um, especially if it's not something that's environmental, which is a completely different circumstances. So thank you. Thank you for the clarification. Yeah. And that's why it's so important to talk to a therapist because they are so good with trying to help you ask the right questions about yourself to figure out where this might have stemmed from or what the problem might be. So yes. I'm going to go back to that again. <laughs> uh, right. That's when I found out I had PTSD because I, I got my diagnosis and I was like, what? I don't have PTSD. And then I realized I did. Yeah. <laughs> and like talking through it and figuring that out was a, definitely helped me come to terms with what it was. Because like I said, visualizing it definitely helps me combat it. So being able to figure out what it is, is important, I would say, to being able to move past it. Flizzote says, would you guys agree with the idea that mental health is not your fault, but it is your responsibility? What do you think, Matt? 100 percent like i said there are people everyone has something going on in their life it is absolutely your responsibility no matter what hand you've been given or dealt it's your responsibility to be a good person uh, it's your responsibility to treat others with kindness it's your responsibility to be the best version of yourself like it's not easy never ever will it ever be easy but it is something that is your responsibility there's no writing off an excuse because you have these issues I can't say, uh, fuck you, Cash. Uh, sorry, I was depressed. That, do that doesn't work. Like, I still have to own up to the fact that I was a bad person and said something mean to my friend. It's not something that you can just write off because you're feeling this way. You have to be able to, like, own up to who you are. Um, that said, like, there are definitely times when, like, my mental illness causes me to do things that I wouldn't do that are outside of my, my personality. Sometimes like I'll, I'll say something that I didn't mean. And still, it is my responsibility to go back and apologize and be like, I'm sorry that this happened, that this is how I was feeling. You have to be able to address it and be honest because like it's not anyone's fault that you have these issues, but you still have to be the best version of yourself. That's not something that goes away or that there's no excuse for it. I would definitely agree that it is always your responsibility, always your responsibility to to do the right thing and deal with what you're going through. However, it's it's a little tricky with is it your fault? Is mental health your fault, your illness that you're dealing with? Because there comes a point. I, basically, what I want to say is as soon as you become aware that you have this mental illness or that you're dealing with this situation, it is now the utmost your responsibility and is now your fault in a sense that you if you this is a very strong opinion if you um make a mistake or something like obviously people make mistakes but whatever you decide to do after you're aware of it can lead to your fault but besides that you know when when we're young we don't even know what's going on or that we have that we're dealing with this thing we just think this is who we are and i, I don't think i'd place blame on those people who don't know what's going on um, i agree yeah um, like it, it does, it does become a point where like, I wouldn't say it's your fault that you are given that like uh, mental illness, but like do you, if you perpetuate your behavior after you know what's going on and you know that you can be better, that would, that would cause you to be at fault. I agree with that a hundred percent. Um, you for clarifying. just like there are people out there who have these mental illnesses and will act however they want because they feel like they have an excuse because like they, they feel like because they are going through this they're different from everyone else in a way that gives them the, the right to they have a different morals and morality is not subjective there is a universal morality that we all have to abide by um it's important to recognize that and be able to be accountable for your actions i think that's the important thing otherwise you're acting selfishly i was put much better thank you for clarifying what i was trying to say Okay. I got you. Cyrus Light Shard says, I found out I was bipolar at 13. It's all I've known, but it's not an identity. What I've learned in this battle helps me understand people better. How they think, what they do, what they do. To me, it was a tool or a building block. Am I cured? Hell no. Will I ever be rid of it? 
uh, never, but will I be managed? Yes, and I do for the most part of it. I have a good handle on it because bipolar is what it is. It can all come crashing down temporarily. Up until three years ago, even the thought of taking any rash action was even a thought. I went through so much in the prior year and a half before that time. I was ready, had everything, and went to where I was going to do it. And as I sat there, I talked myself out of it. I sat beside myself, and I talked to myself in my head and stopped myself. It's a hazy memory, and I don't remember much of that time period of the day, but I know there was no one else around me. Hmm. So... I guess I'm, I'm a little unclear on on what you mean by that. I realize what you said uh, that wasn't even a thought in the in the second message, but um, I was just thinking about therapy. I have no idea, like, and, and kind of what you were saying as far as talking yourself out of, of doing things that you should be doing, in a sense. Uh, I believe um, you're referring to a, an attempt. Oh, okay. I see. I see. And uh, for me, I can say from my viewpoint, um, uh, when I was idealizing killing myself or suicide in any way, um, for me, um, I never could do it because of the, my uh, my little sisters. I always had that holding me back. I always felt pressured, like I, I couldn't do that. But I would idealize it. I would think about it all the time. I'd think about running away and like killing myself and like somewhere they never find my body. When and like is no worse or it's no better than uh than suicide because like it's it is it's the same thing it's like that's even worse because like you left them not knowing um but like that idealization is uh it's a it's just basically a hint that something's wrong and that you need help that because anytime you're idealizing killing yourself something's not right you know you have to even if you like for me. I still have those thoughts that pass through every time. And that's just like a big red flag to me. Like, okay, I need to reevaluate what's going on right now and work through it because obviously something's not right. Because if you're living a healthy life, that those thoughts, they don't pop up. Um, I don't know if there's much of a question there. Yeah, it's just sharing the experience. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've sat... I've sat in a car, you know, in my darkest times with a with a bottle of pills contemplating. It's, there's mm -hmm. been definitely times of that. I used to self-harm a little bit when I was in high school, but I think I've grown out of that uh, just because that's a whole that's a whole thing that I'm not going to get into. Um, but it's I, I, I see myself as never the person to be able to follow through with it. Um, However, I think it's very detrimental when you when you start to have those vivid like thoughts about doing those sort of things. It's and that's basically the the point in time when I start to go get help, which is kind of bad. I I don't advise that. I advise getting help earlier on before you yes. see those. But I understand. That's, that's my that's, issue. Like I said, that's that's like a flag, like where you're like, okay, I need help now. Yeah, yeah. But I'm 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 really glad that you you shared this stuff with us, Cyrus, and I'm glad that you're still here. Absolutely. I know that's a cheesy thing to say, but you're a really cool dude, and I appreciate you. This is why mental health and coping mechanisms should be spoken more and talked about, especially in young people. Absolutely, because that's where it starts. Like, <laughs> people need to yeah. know, and these kids need to know that that these things are here in the world, and that they're going on, and that that might be a part of their life. I, I don't know why they're not talked about more openly with kids because when I was a kid I got depressed and like that's that that whole feeling of not knowing about what was going on because it wasn't talked about at all that that made me feel so isolated and alien um like childhood depression is a very real thing that exists and there are a lot of kids out there who deal with it and they don't have any knowledge of what's going on because it's depression is considered an adult subject suicide is considered an adult subject and it's not talked about and it's very it's very important that, that they know what's going on you know it, it's important to talk with the youth or if anyone that, that they know that this is what's what the world's like because the world's not going to change just because you're young it still exists in all its brutality absolutely 
Therapy is great. I only had two sessions before lockdown, but learned so much about myself and that a lot of it is down to control, whether it's too much or not at all. I'm really great. I'm, I'm glad that like you went to therapy and that it, it helped you. Like that's a good sign, you know? And, and that's basically what it is for. It's it's to help you learn about why things are the way they are and, and what the 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 point or the the focus should be on to to fix. I guess not really fix, but work on to cope. Um let's see. Blizzot, what do you guys think of things like 13 reasons why? What technically do open discussion, but in the same breath seem to glorify mental health issues? Have you seen that show? No, but I know of it and I have very strong feelings about it. I've seen season one. Um I think that that because I have not seen it, but from what I've been told and what I know of it, uh, the way that it talk that it handles mental health is not a healthy way of approaching the subject. Um, basically, they had a psychologist on board throughout all of filming, and the psychologist compl- like constantly would say not to do this, and they'd completely go around and do the exact opposite thing, like showing a suicide live on the show, like oh showing God. a rape live on the show. And all these things that are not conducive of approaching mental health in the correct way. Not to mention the fact that they didn't even classify like depression or suicide in the normal light or a way that would be approachable to talking about it the right way. It's just going to give people the wrong impression and it will glorify it for people who are watching it and might be impressionable, like younger people who do not know the healthy way of dealing with it yet. It's just, it's not. It's like it's like um before this is not a touchy subject, but like uh, when Robin Williams committed suicide, like the the genie is free uh, meme that was going around, it was it's very it's not like sure it does open up the the topic for like discussion, but you don't want to give people the wrong impression or the wrong views on this. It's a very sensitive topic that needs to be discussed properly, which is why like you should go see a therapist because they know what they're talking about. Um, if you're shown something in the wrong right, it could imp- it could give it could have horrible ramifications for the impressions that it gives. I completely agree. I think that that show is is terrible. I I watched through the first season uh, through my you you said it very very well, Matt, and that's exactly what I was thinking. It's over glorified. It definitely is. And from the experience of watching it, I did get triggered. I got triggered heavily, especially towards the end of that season, and I did not like it whatsoever. It made me very depressed. <laughs> and and for for young people, because it's directed towards young people in school, and and the fact that we were just talking about that kids don't really know about this stuff, and there's not enough awareness for them to know what's going on. And so now they're watching this show, and now the only information that they're getting is this this must be like the option to go if I'm feeling this way, <laughs> and it's terrible. And so I really, I, I don't, I don't like that they did that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like for me personally, I'm always going to be very anti-censorship. Like you should be able to create what you want to create, but you have a responsibility with what you create and what you put out there. And if you are talking about these subjects, you have to make sure that you approach it in the right way or you shouldn't do it at all because Mm -hmm. it's something that could potentially cause people to make the horrible choices and either end their life or end up in a place where they can't get themselves out of it mm. um especially with younger people because they are so impressionable but at the same time anyone would be impressionable if they don't have the right resources it's all about having the right resources and if you're just putting more of the, the wrong resources out there then you're just going to muddle the pot they're going to make it so that people don't get the help they need because they're they're getting misinformation and not that's just that's not the, that's not good <laughs> it's fake news yeah <laughs> cyrus appreciate you saying it. this is a topic i'm passionate about and sharing is a way of getting some past some of my issues they call it an adult subject matter yet how many minors have made successful attempts Does this affect all yeah exactly exactly i refuse to watch it no reason to possibly yeah i don't recommend it to anybody um i mean it, it's I really don't. I really don't recommend it to anybody, unfortunately. It's not good. Uh, do you think someone who does not have mental illness could truly understand what someone who does go through? No. <laughs> this is a very <laughs> strong opinion. No, I don't think... Um, well, it's like... 
I'm going to I'm going to rephrase it in a different question uh, completely aside from mental illness. And it's going to sound stupid, but true. Um, do you think I know exactly what it's like to be a woman? <laughs> no, absolutely not. Do you? So I feel like that's very similar comparison. Yeah. No, like, I don't think people I can have an idea of what it's like to be a woman, but exactly. I'm never going to really know. Exactly. Exactly. It's so different. I mean the best thing that people with that don't have mental illness can do for the people who do have it um is to learn the best ways that they can help um which is something that we talked about earlier it's like they'll never truly know what goes on in that that's why it makes it difficult for them to help unless they have the right tools to do it uh, effectively yeah i know personally i found that i always get more support from people who understand what it's like uh, not to admit, not that like people without it can't help. It's just that I feel more comfortable talking to someone who would actually like understand. Um, besides that, you know, a trained professional who has studied it and knows what it's like. Um, and even so, a lot of psychologists are psychologists because they've went through it themselves. And I know that's why I went into psychology is because I dealt with it and I wanted to help people like me. So even then, they have. It's a, it's a matter of like you really can't understand it. No matter even if you read all the textbooks if, and or anything, if you don't have some sort of experience with it. Absolutely, that's why I'm going through psychology myself. I mean, I I, I want the altruistic career in which I help people, but I also want to help myself with as much knowledge as I can on the on mm -hmm. the subject. When I was in school for psychology before I dropped out, like even just learning about it and being able to like to visualize it and know what all this was like it, that was so helpful to me um it's it's r like unfortunately with the new dsm it's a, like a little bit of a backslide but like labels can help absolutely um with being able to v visualize and rationalize things and psychology is very helpful to people who are dealing with all this absolutely go see therapy if you need it <laughs> fourth yep. time fourth time i'm saying it Euler. I believe each instance is entirely a personal one. I believe people on all ends of the spectrum can be empathetic, but never truly understand any individual circumstance. Absolutely. Like, like the best. Not, not entirely. Yeah. I mean, the best thing you can do is to, to understand somebody's viewpoint is put yourself in their shoes, but you can't be them. You know, it's, it's, you're yeah. never going to truly understand anybody you else. Can them. Yeah. That, that's important. <laughs> exactly. I very appreciate that, Cyrus. Um, he says, I just want to put this out there. My inbox is always open if you need to talk. And same with me. And I, I assume same with Matt. You know, like if, Absolutely. if anybody needs to talk about anything, we're here to help. Um, anytime, anywhere. I, I can give my best <laughs> bachelor level psychology advice, <laughs> which and is not, not a lot. I <laughs> can give my personal experiences and my opinions. And I mean, I'm not a trained psychologist. I did go for psychology. I was a psychology major for two years. But um, if sometimes you just need someone to listen, and I understand that entirely. Absolutely. I don't know what BSC means, but <laughs> I appreciate that, man. You guys are all. You guys have been very fantastic through this whole experience, and I. I'm very glad that you're all here with us sharing this uh, this moment and speaking up on this topic. This is this has been very nice. Um, I want to thank you, Parallax, for coming and joining with me. My best friend, my best buddy, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure. This is... If this works, <laughs> is a shout out to Parallax Party. Hey, work. Um, <laughs> if you have not checked him out yet, Go give him a follow. He's a, he's a great dude. And he plays some pretty cool shit. And he streams. So I, I really hope that you guys uh, took something good from this. Maybe I'll make a, a tweet out, you know, asking, like, maybe, you know, what what kind of things did you take away from this? Maybe you guys could answer that so I get a, you know, a good understanding of what might be helping you in this situation. Um, and, yeah, thank you so much for, for joining us.